A Norwegian hobbyist created a toy robot that can change from a rolling sphere to a walking machine. But it'll probably end up just being another expensive toy for your dog. A new three-wheeled roadster lets you live life in the fast lane. Think of it as a tricycle for your inner three-year-old and a sports car for your outer midlife crisis. And artists in London are claiming that GIFs are the new graffiti out with street art. And yes, it's GIF, not JIF. I don't care what the creator says. Mm, pretty sure it's JIF. It's GIF. It's tomorrow Daily. <laughs>
the wheel is in the back. The one wheel is in the back. The two wheels are in the front. It's called a slingshot. It's not a car, okay? Do not call it a car because what you're seeing is the way it is. It's open air. You got to wear a helmet. Um, well, because it's three wheels, isn't it motorcycle distinction? So you have to have a motorcycle license. Yeah, because there was um, there was a car that was supposed to make it to market but never did, and I wanted one, and I was going to put Aptera. I wanted to put a deposit down on it, and they did. It sort of works with the same physics, right, where it's like the reason it's in reverse triangle is to keep it from doing a uh, paper airplane move where it's like you do this, and if you go too fast, you go up. You just go, <laughs> yeah, you goodbye. Yeah, you fly in the air, and then you flip over. But the cool thing about not being a car is guess what? No airbags, no bumpers, no crash protection. Oh, great. Love no all those things. What Open could possibly cockpit. go wrong? Yeah, what could possibly go wrong? Especially when they're quoting it on their site as being a roadster jet fighter. So where could you drive this thing? Could you drive this thing on real streets? I'm not sure you can. Like, you might need to do this on, like, closed track kind of no, stuff. No, I don't think so. I mean, you see people do, uh, like, motorcycle rides up in the mountains. They take, like, a nice leisurely ride. It'd be kind of cool to, like, you know, take the curves and... But is it street legal? I, that's a good question. I don't know. I'm not an expert in like all things street legal, but it looks awesome. You're going to turn heads. If you drive this thing down the road, yes. is there any person that would not either stop to ask you what it is or you know want to ride or whatever? I would imagine it's street legal if you're wearing a helmet because it's not because it's not closed. Like I know Aptera had the motorcycle distinction, but you didn't have to wear a helmet because it had a closed top. Okay, if it, yeah. So I, I think that if, it's, if it follows all of the rules and regulations of your particular state's motorcycle street legalness, but like a three-wheeled ATV, you can't bring on the road. No. And you have to wear a helmet. So this, I feel like this no, is like in true. that sort of like ATV arena. I don't know. Well, the only way we're really going to know for sure is if Polaris gives us a test ride and explains more about it. So call us. So how much would you pay for this? I would pay... If, if money was no object, I haven't seen the price. Okay. If I if money was no object, I think the most I'd pay for this would be like twenty grand. And 25. that's right. That's really? exactly how much it starts at. Wow. So I think we have learned something about Ashley. I'm feeling very psychic. You are money. the predictor of all things financial. That's true. I feel really very good, good about it. I, I didn't look up the price. I promise. I'm surprised. So just for you gearheads out there, 2.4 liter dual overhead cam engine, five speed manual transmission, and a dry weight of less than 1,700 pounds. So I can't drive a stick. Can you drive this thing around? We are not stick shifters here. You can't in California. There's too much traffic. No way. It's you're not. Hard. You're not waiting in that traffic. Like stop nope. and go. Nope. Um, so our last story, I just found charming as all get out, and I was feeling very old timey when I put that sentence together in my head. Uh, these street artists in London, who I am going to apologize to right now because I'm going to butcher their mm -hmm. names beyond belief and as somebody whose name constantly gets butchered i'm sorry ashley stuff to say i know it's really difficult this is a duo of artists named goose terbeek and tefan sarier uh they took an ipad and framed it to make it look like a piece of art and then ran uh gifs Ant animated gifs which i still say it's a gif and i'm sorry to anybody out there who gets annoyed by it because the creator says it's gif He's wrong. So, I don't, so, okay, and I don't want to take away from the art, but if the creator says it's GIF, how come it's not GIF? There, I, that's my favorite, by the way, Bowser. Well, yeah, no, I love the Bowser. Well, because it stands for graphical interface format, so graphical, so, so it's a hard G. So I say it's GIF. Go, go, go. Um, you don't say it's a GIF. I'm going to well, buy you a GIF. What about Jiffy Peanut Butter? Do you call it Griffy? Starts with a, starts with a J. Rich. Griffy Peanut Butter? Oh, yeah, you're right. Okay. Um, so I love where they put these things. They put them like in all different places where you have to notice them, like yeah. above like this. Where you, yeah, right. Where you have on, to like press bus. the crosswalk I love button. It. Um, it's fun, but I think that they just use the same one over and over. It's not like there's 300 of them around. Well, there's well, they're two different. Well, they're different frames. They yeah. have a bunch of different frames, so I don't know. But I really love how they did this. They sort of made it look like it was just art in motion. And there are a lot of artists in New York and LA who have sort of done something similar. But I just thought this was really cool that they were going around hanging up iPads and having people uh, watch these really creepy GIF of the Jungle Book. You know they didn't go too far with that iPad standing there. Yeah. My favorite are those little, like, when you're walking on the street and they kind of made it look 3D, like the chalk art yes, kind of ones. Yes, I love that. And you, like, don't want to walk on it. Perspective yeah. art, that's so cool. Where it looks like there's a giant, like, hole in the ground. You're like, whoa, and, watch out. Yeah, no, it's really neat. So just really cool stuff uh, that, that I saw. And I just, like I said, I thought it was really charming. It's something I would love to see if I was just walking down the street. Like, I think that would be really cool. Yeah, you would stop and just be like, what is that? Yeah, I'd be like, wait a minute. Yeah. The the Bowser one, you saw the people, they all look back, wait a minute, is that Bowser? What's that? Like, yeah, what? What's happening over here? So I just thought that was really cool. Um, good job making the world a more whimsical place. I'm all about that. Uh, we are going to take a quick 30 second break. We are going to come right back. We have uh, a new Back It or Hack It, uh, which I found very interesting. And then we also have your user feedback for our virtual reality story and of course our phone target for the day. So don't click away. It's Tomorrow Daily.
Welcome back to Tomorrow Daily. Uh, we have a very fascinating Back at or Hack it today, so we're going to jump right in. Our Back at or Hack it today is called Sense. Sense. And they say that they are trying to redefine the way we sleep. Mm -hmm. um, this is a sleep tracker. They're going to say, well, we want to reinvent the alarm. Here's the page. Um, and you can see it's a little sphere. It unfortunately does not open up into a six-legged hexapod. Thank God, when you're trying to sleep, you don't well, want that. Maybe if it rolled away like clocky, it's yeah. like it turns its run legs and, get and like it. takes off. Wait, yeah. I want to turn off my alarm. <laughs> I can't. Um, so here's the yeah, app. You can wave it, and then it, it's got a whole bunch of like color changing options in there, um, and it will track the way you sleep. So there's this little, um, I believe there's a tag. It's called the sleep pill. Yeah, it's a, the sleep. You, if you need to take a sleep pill. It's a great name for a device. You tag that to your pillow. You you attach it to your pillow, and it's basically monitoring as you sleep. And it does two things. It uh, helps you wake up like at your prime time. So like. Yeah. Let's say your alarm's set for 6.30, and it kind of sense, sense, get it? Senses that you're ready to go at like 6.15, it's gonna gently wake you up at 6.15. Right. Because have you ever done that thing where like you wake up, you have to be up at like 6.05, let's say. Yeah. And you're up at like 6.03, and you look at the alarm, you're like, oh, thank God, I have two more minutes to sleep. And then you sleep like for another hour, because you're like, yeah. you know. Or, or you, you have to go to sleep at like, or you have to wake up at say seven, and then you get up at 6.40, and you're like, oh, I got another 20 minutes. Like, I'm gonna go back to bed, and then you go back to, and you feel great though. You sure. feel like you oh, should you wake love, up. Yeah. And then you go back to sleep, and then your whole body goes nuts, and you just dive right back in on a deep sleep, and you're yep. groggy the rest of the morning. I hate when that so happens. So this is going to try to get you up at that exact prime time for your yeah. body because it, it say like, reads hey, all these measurements. Hey, we're not going to go ahead and you know we're not going to do waking up anymore at seven. We're going to wait. You're going to wake up now at six forty. Let's just have you do that because <laughs> you're moving, you're stirring, and it knows that you're naturally waking up. Um, oh, good idea. Well, so my question, a couple questions, but first let me just, one more thing to explain. It does a sleep score, which I think this is like sort of the magic bullet. Oh, people, get your sleep score. People love to quantify like anything in their lives, and I think having a sleep score is really good. Like, ah, oh, last night I got a 95%, and you know, that means that I'm going to feel really good today. Like, no matter crushing what. Crushing it, crushing the sleep. Oh, I totally crushed it in my sleep last night. Um, but and apparently a lot of people have trouble sleeping or want to have better sleep because this thing got like almost two million dollars worth of backing and it only asked for a hundred thousand. Yeah, it's so over this two thousand percent killed it. Yeah, it has absolutely destroyed its goal so of a hundred thousand. Uh, you know, it's like if you want one, um, the sense and the sleep pill is early backer Kickstarter price is only ninety nine bucks. Okay. So I say for ninety nine bucks, the same price as an Apple TV, a Roku, you know, Roku three. I say yes. I say back it. I'm okay. in. I'm gonna say uh, hack it. You gonna say no? You no, don't need it? because you sleep yeah. too well already. No. Well, I am a good sleeper, but uh, I just don't like. I wore the the jawbone, like the jaw, the the thing, the up. The up. Yeah. I wore that for like a couple weeks, and it does like the sleep tracking and this okay. and that. And like after a while, you just realize like, what what can it really add to my life? Like it's just it's almost like too much. Like sometimes the old-fashioned way of doing things is a little bit better. Yeah. And I, you know, or maybe I you just don't need to. You don't need complicate it. it. Although I do think the sleep score would be kind of fun. I do like the sleep score. I think for me, I'm a really light sleeper, so I feel like I need more hours a night to get enough sleep. Um, but I, I would be curious to know how often I wake up in the night. See, and I had that with the jawbone, and I'm like, it didn't. What did it tell me? But doesn't sense. Sense oh, uh, does the thing where it records. So it records like, like audio. So when you stir in your sleep in the middle of the night, it'll record some audio so you can tell if it was like a car horn or your spouse is snoring or, you know, dog barking or whatever it is. And you can sort of find okay. out what wakes you up in the night. But how many times are you going to do that? Maybe twice until you figure out. You're like, okay, my dog barks. But here's the one thing I really liked about the jawbone with the whole like waking up in the middle of the night thing mm -hmm. is that sometimes you ever wake up and you feel like, oh my God, I was up for like an hour last night. And yeah. I looked at my little jawbone up thing. Two minutes. Yeah, it was like five, seven minutes. I'm like, <laughs> you know what I mean? So we're gonna stay up for a whole hour. I just couldn't go back to bed. But if you get that terrible sleep score, it's gonna ruin your whole day. Yeah, oh, that's I got a 35 true. last night, boss. Sorry, I'm a little off today. Well, maybe that's a really good excuse for people. I'd be like, sorry guys, I come into the show and be like, listen, Rich, I got like a 40 last night. Don't wear your sleep score on your on your shoulder. No, no, it's just like your emotions. Don't put them on your sleeve. Keep playing close to the chest. So I'm gonna hack it, although you know it doesn't really matter because so yeah. many other people are backing it. It's getting it. backed. So um, yeah, really, I say I say go. So back it. 
Uh, and then our uh, our users, our viewers. So many of you. You fantastic people. You have some great things to say. So let's talk about your user feedback. Last week, we asked you guys to tell us with the hashtag TDVR what your tech addiction is and what you would do, uh, what virtual reality you would use to treat it. And you guys really, uh, you came through. Our, actually, our first user didn't give us a tech addiction, but gave us some suggestions as to how you could use virtual reality in the future. Oh, and I really okay. like this. So Josh writes to us and says, hashtag TDVR, I think it would be great for people training in dangerous environments such as firefighting, SWAT team, bomb squad, etc. Yeah, again, we are not leaving our houses in the future. Everything no. will be done. When it becomes so good where it's like a real environment, I mean, think about all the things like you're saying, Josh, you can do with this. I mean, yeah, it really I is phenomenal. Walking. I won't have to go to Japan because I could just put on my Oculus and go, that would be Walking cool. down the street. Maybe there'll be an exchange like Airbnb. Okay, I'm giving away a really good startup idea right now on a the air. Million dollar idea million coming dollar your idea. way for free. It's like Airbnb, but it's, a, it's like a peer-to-peer -peer connection with Oculus Rift and Google Glass. Ooh, okay. So you have somebody say in Japan, who would give you a walking tour of like Akihabara or Tokyo, and then you could watch it on your, like live on your Rift. It's a really good idea. Then you'd basically match people up. I'm, I'm getting over your pronunciation of Akihabara. It's Akihabara. Akihabara. Maybe I, bet, I just say it like that. I bet you're saying it wrong. I'm saying it probably Giffy. the American way. Yeah, see, say, there we go. We got that. Yeah. Yeah. That is uh, a fun place, though. Yeah, no, I, I think it would be really neat. Or even L L London. Like, there's so many places that people... I would go, like, if you can be on the London E. Yeah. The I. The E. The is, that I. Your, is that your official yeah. pronunciation? The E? Or maybe in the uh, the metro. The e -A. <laughs> Or the 2B? Yeah. Um, I, I think it's a really good idea. So I, I really like that, Josh. That's cool. And then our second one, we actually had a custom GIF made of us, which ties into today's show. It's from Lon <laughs> D, and he says, attention, Tomorrow Daily, I am a Photoshop addict hooked on tech shows with a hashtag save Shenmue compulsion, hashtag TDVR. So that's you saying, and cheesy jokes, and then me talking about Lon D, which, so Shenmue is a game, really good game. They have Shenmue and Shenmue 2 for Dreamcast. Uh, it has a, it's a cult following. It's, it's a really good game. Um, but yeah, a lot of people want to see Shenmue three, and I don't. I don't know that we ever will. It might not happen. I don't know that we Wait, ever will, Londi. But you keep your hopes Dreamcast? alive. Dreamcast. Yeah. So like, yeah, I don't think there's Dreamcast. a three coming out anytime you soon. You never know. But I like the idea that you took all that time to make a little GIF of us. That was cool. Yeah, it was really nice to make a GIF of us. Uh, we're gonna, this is going to be a never-ending battle on this show. Um, we would love it if you guys made GIFs of us any old time for the show because I am eternally amused by that. Um, but before we get into that, today's hashtag is hashtag TD gifts. Oh, okay. So convenient. It's never ending. Never ending. We're just gifts all day today. And we want you to let us know what you would frame on an iPad or a tablet. So what GIF would you show off as a piece of street art? And then make sure you link us to it because we want to see it and show it on the show. And then I want to also put how you would pronounce it. Like that's what mine. Yeah. Well, no, that's and what is mine it would be. Or GIF? No, there mine would go. just be framed. It would be the pronunciation. Just telling people how yeah. to pronounce it. I hate it. It'd be a jar of. That sounds butter. like a, the worst idea ever. Um, and the scoop being taken out. <laughs> I love this that you've thought this out so thoroughly. Uh, it is time to celebrate our photographer of the day. You guys always send in great pictures. We are inundated. It is a flood it on is. a daily basis. And you all live in the craziest places around the world. We the love best it. best places. Like literally every, I'm just like, I can't believe every single person that watches this show is all over the world. I love it. We're very international. I feel, it makes me feel very cosmopolitan. Uh, so our phone tower for the day today is Tio, which is short for Theodore, he says. Uh, he lives in Greece, and this picture shows the promenade of his hometown, uh, Thessaloniki. Thessaloniki. I'm going to say that. Yeah. As you see, the picture also depicts a mountain in the background, which is Mount Olympus. Oh, wow. Where all the ancient Greek gods were supposed to live based on my country's mythology. The mountain is much more majestic up close, so the image doesn't do it much justice. The photograph was taken with my Nexus 5, for which I hope there will be pure lithium batteries, as you mentioned in a video, because the battery life of the phone is annoyingly short. 
I chuckled at that yeah. when he wrote that. Anyway, I hope you have a great summer. Love the hosting. Show is extremely informative and also entertaining. Thanks to you both. Well, thank you. Thank you, T.O. I think that's a great picture. I love it. It has, every, it has everything you want in a picture. Nice foreground and middle ground, and then you got Mount Olympus in the background. I mean, really. I mean, how many pictures have Mount Olympics? Mount Olympics? <laughs> Mount Olympics. Wow. You know, this is the guy to definitely take advice from this when you want to know how to pronounce things. This show has gone off the rails. It yeah, has no, gone I off actually, rails. truth be told, I am the worst pronunci pronunciator of everything. Pronunciator? I don't even know if yeah, I said that good. right. Perfect. But I really am not the person to ask to pronounce anything. And I'm on TV for a living. That's which is really scary. slightly scary, yeah. It's uh, but but Tio, we really loved your picture and it was fantastic. If you would like to submit your hashtag of the day or your phonography, you can email us tomorrow at cnet.com. Uh, don't worry if we don't show it right away. We have a big backlog of photos, so uh, we have them lined up. I think for the next like two yeah. weeks right now. Um, but you can also email us your hashtag of the day if you don't use Twitter. Uh, but if you do use Twitter, you can find us. Find us on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook. We are Tomorrow Daily on all those places. And we are also on Google Plus for you Googleites out there. People love that Google Plus. Yes. Uh, we are Tomorrow Daily TV. And of course, if you want to find us individually, because a lot of you are tweeting at us uh, personally, I'm Rich Demuro, and then Rich on Tech on Facebook. And I'm Ashley Esqueda on both Twitter and Facebook. Pretty easy to find. Um, but that is it for Tomorrow Daily for today. You guys be good humans, and we will see you tomorrow. Bye.